Hello. Hello. <laughs> Not used to technology. I'm still adjusting myself. <laughs> Right. Nice, nice to see you. Nice to see you, Mr. Chuck. Nice to see Alden. Why is there one more? Nice to see you. Hi. Welcome. How are you? It's been a long time since I've seen your face. So nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I look chubby. Stay home. <laughs> All right, just hang on, I'll be back. <laughs> Have you been, Sandy? It's breaking up a little bit. Mm. Uh, sometimes, if, you... if the line is not very good, sometimes you'll have a delay in the... Oh, you can have a delay okay. in the speaker. I think it's the network. Can you hear me? Right. Fantastic. So we, I'll be just be admitting a few people joining us more, and then in a minute or so we should be able to start. Okay. Wonderful. Sorry? Can you hear me clearly? Can you hear? Yeah, you're good, Zandi. Oh, okay. Don't worry, it will be breaking on and off, but you should be good. Okay. I'll stay calm. <laughs> All right, it's a very good afternoon to everybody joining us uh, for the Bulawayo Conversations Zoom meetings. My name is uh, Clifford Zulu and I'm going to be talking today to some uh, visiting artists and local collaborators in a project called uh, Ilizwe Nika, the nation. So we're coming from you. Uh, we're coming live from Dawson House, the home of the National Gallery. And I would like to take this opportunity to introduce uh, the participants whom I'm going to be having a conversation with this afternoon. I'll start off by welcoming from Johannesburg, uh, Deborah Weber. Hi, Deborah. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and from Cape Town, I believe we'll be joined in by Elgin Rust. Hello, Elgin. Hi, everybody. And from the city of Kings, Goblawaya, we are joined in by Zandire Masugu. Hi, Zandi. Hello. Fantastic. So we are still expecting um, other project members to join in. But as we start, I'll probably read out a statement, just a bit of background to this um, uh, project. So Elizwe, Deborah will explain more later, but it's a project uh, that applied for residency here at the National Gallery sometime last year. And uh, the team came in and collaborated with local artists in the name of um, Lady Chawe, Shamila Asha, Zandila Masugu, and Nomvuiso Mavi, and myself, of course. And then the team from South Africa, was Elgin um, Rust, uh, Jolene Cardinal, and Deborah Weber. So this makes the team of Elizwe, Nika, and Nation. So I'll ask uh, for now that maybe if you're not a member of the Elizwe project, just mute your mics for the moment. After about 30 minutes or so, we are going to invite you to come in and make contributions to the project. As the National Gallery, we are supposed to be showcasing uh, this project between the months of April up to May, but because of the COVID-induced lockdown here in Zimbabwe and most uh, countries around the globe, we had to postpone this exhibition to 2020. 
So to kick us off, Deborah, if do you mind uh, sharing a little bit about uh, the background on Elizwe and how it came about? Sure. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for having us, uh, Cliff, on this platform, this conversations platform. Um, it's really great to see all our, some of our collaborators. Unfortunately, not everyone. Uh, sorry. That's fine. Uh, not everyone could be here with us. Um, two of our collaborators weren't able to join us. Um, but just to give you a little bit of background as to how the project came about. This uh, project is actually the third project in a series of big collaborative projects um, that I've worked on. And I've worked on all of those projects so far with Algen Rust, who's also um, on our call this, today. Um, the first one we started in 2014, and that was um, done, it was called Karoo Disclosure, um, about fracking in the Karoo region of South Africa. The second project, uh, we did in 2015 and that project um, was, it had about 22 artist members involved in that project. Um, and that was Ubulungis with Justice. Um, and that was around the time of the Fees Must Fall movement in South Africa. And these projects, um, they've all been multidisciplinary. So artists from different um, mediums and backgrounds, um, various different language skills, education levels um, and actual artistic talents working together around a concept or a topic. So the main focus actually was also when working collaboratively is to put together a project with participants who are interested in a particular subject or topic and creating a framework for them to work around an idea and then really allowing the project to unfold uh, with the members that are participating. So Elizwe is our third project that we've worked on in this way. Um, I'm just gonna maybe read you a little bit of our project statements I think would be relevant. So when we just talk about the work, this collaboration is a multidisciplinary work investigating different values and ideologies attached to land, national identity, boundaries and belonging in Southern Africa and Zimbabwe. Uh, and we aim to encourage collaboration between South African and Zimbabwean artists across artistic disciplines. Land is a sensitive issue in both South Africa and Zimbabwe, both countries' colonial histories, struggles for independence and forced removals. Land ownership and land rights are still contentious issues in both neighboring states. Land and gender are charged topics as both countries struggle with transformation and healing from a colonial from a colonial um, and the history of apartheid. The collective, mainly compromised of female artists, besides Cliff, um, developed the work through a series of workshop processes that allowed them to collectively explore histories and narratives, personal and historical, around gender and land. The group also chose to explore the historical narratives of the Indi narrative of the Indabela Queen Lozike and the Indabela people in connection to a historical site of the hillside dam Bulawayo. The site is uh, said to be located uh, to be the location of King Lobungelo's favorite royal village to which he escaped to relax in the 19th century and is now a national monument. Alizwe is the Ndebele word for nation, Nika the Shona word for nation, both tribes found in Zimbabwe. The Ndebele um, in, Bul in the Bulawayo region have strong historical ties to the Zulu nation in South Southern Africa. We also, through the process of the project, um, ex chose, you know, through our workshops to explore um, the Queen, Queen Lozike as one of our central characters um, and looked at her history um, and how, to, you know, ways in which to explore the historical narrative of her um, um, yeah, of, of her importance to Zimbabwe. Um, while we were in residency uh, last year in September, um, we also experienced, um, South Africa was experiencing xenophobic attacks. Um, and at the, in the same week, there was the hashtag enough is enough campaign of women 
uh, against abuse and violence against women. Um, and in that same week, President Robert Mugabe passed on. So we had all of these external issues to deal with while we were still trying to process um, the meanings for us individually and collectively as a group of mainly women artists. Uh, you know, the meaning of land to us um, and to us as women as well from both countries. So it was a very emotionally charged week and um, we ended up producing a considerable amount of work during that very short period of time, which included um, huge collaborative collage works, as well as um, a performative video uh, work with a soundtrack, which will be part of an installation. Uh, we also produced uh, uh, photographic portraits um, and then some actual physical installation pieces, which we will show alongside the exhibition. So I think, um, I think I'm going to end there for now and the group can, I can hand over back to Cliff. Thanks. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Thanks, Deborah. That was a very uh, informative introduction there. And then at the moment, I would like to then introduce members of that Illusio project. I'll ask Elgin to come in and uh, also introduce herself to the participants. Elgin. Okay, thank you uh, Clifford and thank you National Gallery in Zimbabwe. And thank you to my team members that are here today supporting the project. Um, and I, yeah, just also thank you to all the people that couldn't make it. I know that they all would like to make it, but we all have so much on our platters at the moment being thrown into um a even more crazy time than it was i think in last year september when we were at the residency which as deborah outlined at that point in time was already filled with a lot of uncertainty and a lot of um gender violence and enough is enough and and right now again as we go into lockdown Three, there's been a huge rise against, of, of violence against women in our country, yet again, so I'm feeling a bit, this doesn't seem to end. But enough of where we are now, very briefly about me. I'm a German-born, South African-raised um, artist. I studied at Michaelis Fine Art, um, and I did my master's in 2010. And, uh, Jane Alexander, a uh, sculpting department, and I did a huge project that kind of shone the lens onto the legal system, um, kind of turned, turned the, the eye around and in a playful manner kind of investigated the judicial system, the legal system, their structures, the physical structures, the sort of emotional spaces and um, I created a quite a large installation, three-dimensional installation, using actually found material from the old courtrooms that I explored, going into the courts and actually spending time there. Um, I guess for me, it's a lot about process. And what I learned there was that um, it was very interesting and very informative to kind of do that project on my own. And it was my, my experience that I w was working through and then sharing with the audience. But I felt it was such a topic that was so relevant to a broader audience, a broader set of artists. Um, and I started to kind of call for collaborative work so that I gave other artists a sort of chance to intervene in my original artwork and they could create an appeal and in 2012 I had another show in Joburg where they literally could take parts of my installation and re-envision them and appeal kind of the whole argument about the structures of legal justice and how they understand it and how they fit into it so mm -hmm. it was yeah it was after that that I met Deborah in Cape Town and um at that time, she was still living in Cape Town. And she suggested Karoo Disclosure, and she spoke a little bit about those projects that we did. We started off with Karoo Disclosure. Also, fracking, a topic very close to our heart, um, the environment, the impact on, on 
society, on the natural environment, etc., is huge. So we unpacked that quite in depth, and then we moved on to the next collaborative project, which was justice. And at that point, when I started in, I was more doing um, facilitating and as an and installation. That was obviously always my emphasis was the, the installation and um, so as we worked we then went into justice which was the next project which was very close to my heart um, fantastic and, yeah Again, sorry if i'm going on that. no that's fine hang on to that we'll get into the details of the rest of the project as we progress uh from below i uh, would like to introduce andile vanessa masogo uh, Zandi, if you can and uh, introduce yourself. Okay, okay. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Zandi. I am a visual artist. Um, I'm also a gene architect. I studied at the University of Brighton in the UK, graduated 2008. And worked in the construction industry in Mulao. I stopped, it was in 2013, with the National Gallery of Zimbabwe told me. And since then, I've been part of the visual arts. I've been exhibiting in Mulao. I've exhibited in Harare, in London, in Amsterdam. In the Netherlands. And that's about it. So I'm still here to exhibit an abstract, um, very conceptual work about um, cycles, about spheres, about dots, about spirituality, about connectivity, about identity. Those are main things, I think. Yes. And that's me in a nutshell. Fantastic, Sandile. Welcome. I think Thank the National you. Gallery, we were excited to have this project here at the gallery. Uh, if, uh, in case you are not, uh, you don't know, the National Gallery runs a residency program here in Bulawayo. We've just been joined now by Jolene Cottmel. She's joining us now and she will just briefly introduce herself. But the residency program runs uh, here in Bulawayo where we invite artists uh, from around the world to come and spend about one or three, up to three months uh, with us here exchanging, uh, sharing skills and ideas with local artists. And it was very, very important that we accept this residency so that we can begin collaborative projects that has been lacking in this part of the world. And this is one of the major, major reasons why we decided to uh, postpone uh, the project so that we can have the physical exhibition here at the gallery because of its nature of being collaborative. Jolene, um, welcome to the conversation. Are you able to introduce yourself now, Jo? Uh, if you can just unmute your mic, Jolene. Yeah, hi. Fantastic, hi. great. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for having me. My name is Jolene and I am a filmmaker and artist and I was very, very privileged to be part of this collaboration. Um, yeah, what more can I say? I loved... Fantastic. We just lost Jolene there for a second. I'm sure she'll be joining us back. Um, so, guys, um, maybe starting with um, uh, Shamila, if you can unmute your, your, your mic and introduce yourself, Shamila Asha. Fantastic. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can, Shamila. Hi. Hi, I'm Shamila Asha. Um, I'm a, a textile artist, a textile designer, and a visual artist. A media painter. So um, my connection to this uh, story, to this narrative, was through a project I had started doing prior to Elise. 
um, which was focused on what land meant to the people of the Mbele and um, in terms of burial rights and especially material land. Um, so it's it it was very it's a very serendipitous sort of um, chance to to work on this project as well. Um, I don't. So my work at the moment is based on fabric, and um, I collect fabric and use fabric in my work, and I use it, and it's a metaphor for the, the being. Um, so that is where I am with my work at the moment. Um, I think I'll add more detail as the conversation goes. I don't have much more to add besides that. Fantastic. Yes. Thank you, Shamila. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, Lady Chawe will not be able to join us to join us this afternoon, and also Nom Fuiso Madi, they will not be able to join us uh, this afternoon. Um, let's expand a little bit about you guys meeting in Bulawayo for the first time, and obviously our visitors coming into Zimbabwe uh, for the first time. How was that experience for you in terms of building the project? I know Elizwe, the title came about when you guys had already met here. Um, take us through that process a little bit. I'll open it to any of the sisters that can go. Maybe Elgin? Uh, yes, um, thank you. Yeah, we had had an open call from what I remember and we slowly started to connect via email in those days before we were so technologically advanced and had Zoom. Uh, so we connected by email, calling our people and then having little conversations around what we were doing and um, finding, as Deborah said, the, the people that were interested in, in the topic in general. Um, so it, it was very exciting to, to just see who was coming in and what they were bringing in to the conversation and um, then actually coming to Bulawayo and physically, physically meeting. In, um, I've never traveled to Bulawayo before. So that was really an amazing opportunity to see a bit more of our country and um, then meeting all these wonderful, wonderful artists um, in a space that was held for us. Um, and it was, yeah, it was quite a transformation, transformative space for me as we slowly worked our way around unpacking all the very sensitive issues around land and around gender and around our different backgrounds and the different histories that we bring to the topic and to the discussion. I feel it was quite a gentle and a very um, sort of opening up kind of space, if I can describe it as that. That was my experience of it. Um, Fantastic. Okay. Thank you over. so much. Okay, and for you, Shamila, as a local collaborator, how did you feel about this connection? Um, I think I've taken so much from the collaboration. I've learned, I learned so much. And I think the idea, I think we need a whole lot more of collaborative work. It, it opens your mind to new ideas. You know, it's it's very rewarding and it's very uplifting, you know, it, and it validates you as an artist, especially as a female artist from Blue Air, because we have so few female artists who are established. It's, it's amazing, you know? So it was an amazing experience for me. It was very eye-opening and there's a lot of things that I've taken from it that I'm continuing in my work and that has changed my work and the way I work now. Fantastic. And for you, Jolene? Ah, she's still not in. That's fine. Uh, Zandile, your experiences in the team coming together, uh, if you could share something about on that. Um, it was an amazing um, and fulfilling experience. I learned a lot. Um, I learned 
how not to think so laterally. I think we, it opened up my mind to think in a very multilateral way. Um, and it also uncovered a lot of layers that I think we tend to hide um, behind or under. Um, so there was a lot of unveiling, um, not just experientially, but also um, in how we express, because I, I'm confined to two dimensional um, in terms of how I do my artwork. Whereas this collaboration um, put me completely out of my, my comfort zone and my element. And I learned other ways of expressing. And I don't know if it's changed my, my way of working, but it's definitely changed how I think about how I express what I'm doing. Fantastic, Zandile. And uh, Deborah, coordinating this and putting this together, you've already mentioned in your introduction that um, that week was intense. The president, former president of Zimbabwe, Robert Mugabe, dying, and also xenophobic attacks in South Africa. The land question, quite very similar issues between Zimbabwe and South African um, people. How was putting this together and what do we do moving forward in view of the postponement? What will you guys be doing uh, uh, between now and then? Um, thanks, Cliff. Um, I mean, my experience with each project that I do is different, completely different. And you never really know what to expect and you never really know how it's going to unfold. And I think the, the real beauty in collaborating with other artists is that you remain open and, and, and the product or the, the, what you end up producing together is always so much different to what you think you might do initially. And as an artist right. with your own, you have an idea in your mind, but in collaborative pr practice, it's all these voices coming together and all of these histories and personal journeys that, you, that, that are coming together in one, in one work. Um, it always amazes me. The process amazes me. And every time I do it, I learn so much. And I was just blown away. I was blown away. I've never been to Zimbabwe. I've always wanted to come. I was blown away by the people, um, just the, the absolute incredible artists, the gallery, um, the space itself. I really learned so much. You know, we, as Elgin said, we shared a lot of research um, and we shared a lot of information before we actually started the residency. So we had kind of set up a WhatsApp group and we had a few calls beforehand. We had a very, very vague um, kind of idea uh, of what we, we wanted. And the, the, I think the common point is that we were interested around this, this topic um, of land. And then the, the conversation ah, around gender came into the project when we all ended up being women artists um, and that it felt that that was very important because um, of the people who who were interested in the project and wanted to participate um, and it was an open call um, so we really were open to anyone participating I think that's very important um, but the people who ended up being in the project were were just the exact right people um, so we are very excited to be able to show the work and we are hoping that um, we'll not only show the work in Bulawayo, but we'll also show the work internationally and also in South Africa. So we were also accepted um, to show at a, an art fair in Stockholm, uh, which has also unfortunately been postponed due to COVID, but we're going to definitely take the work overseas. We're definitely going to show the work in South Africa and we really look forward to having this conversation and showing the work and having conversations about the work uh, with uh, more people in Bulawayo. Fantastic. I was also a participant at the same time slash uh, coordinating the project here in Bulawayo and also trying to put a curatorial premise into all this. Uh, it was a huge experience and a learning curve for me as well because it was uh, so excited to work with these two groups coming into one space. And I must say that week was so, so much exciting that um, 
I think putting together the exhibition has been more challenging, but in a very, very good way because um, the postponement is basically kind of like wanting for people to come and see this physically in as much as we will be able to do a virtual tour of the exhibition, but we would love and we'll definitely have this exhibition opening here in Bulawayo. It's uh, three o'clock here in Zimbabwe, in Bulawayo, and I'm sure it's about 7 a.m. in Houston, in Texas. Welcome, Mike Roberts. Uh, welcome to all other participants that have joined in the conversation. It's uh, in the next 30 minutes, we will be opening up the conversation for you people who are participating in this conversation to also interact and uh, talk to the Elizwe collaboration. I also recognize the presence of uh, regional director, Vurito, who is joining us here, and also the National Gallery of Zimbabwe in Harare, and we will be obviously streaming this live and upload this once it's over and edit. At this moment, I'll open it up to anyone who wants to come in and uh, talk to Elizwe, the collaborative project. I see colleagues from Harare. I see colleagues uh, also from uh, different parts of the world. I see the chairperson of the Visual Art Association of Bulawayo, George Masarida. Anybody wants to come in, just uh, hit the, the button and I'll be able to recognize you from here. <coughs> Harare. Right, well, okay, somebody's talking. Yes, it's uh, Vichy from Harare. Well, I'm from Bulawayo originally. This ah, is yes. my opportunity. <laughs> cool. yes, I, is. I thought I would not miss this opportunity. I'm right there, and this sounds a very exciting project. But the fact that I think the man had cold feet, I don't understand because they are the ones who <laughs> think they own the land and they are the nationalists and everything. So, well, uh, maybe somebody can explain what's going on. Thank you for that, uh, Sis Fitch. She's bringing in a very exciting angle to this whole thing that men seems to have developed cold feet. Deborah, was it deliberate that the open call was exclusive, excluding male? Uh, no, it wasn't uh, targeted at any particular group or age. It was really just to artists in general. And luckily we had Clifford there representing for us. So we did have a male voice that is present in the work. And I think it's a very important male voice. And he was brave enough to work with all women in a project. And I think you know, that in itself was, was an uh, anyone else, Zandi? How, how did you feel about the missing men? Did they chicken out? Were they scared? <laughs> I have no idea why, I'm kind of happy they weren't there. Okay. Okay. Without too much. Thank you, represented very well, Mr. Zulu. Fantastic. Can you hear me? Yes, I we can hear you. Frozen. It did in a while. That's fine. And Shamila, what were your? How did you feel about this angle that was just brought in by Virginia? Well, um. I will I will say um, that we did ask some male participants, some male artists from Bulawayo, and um, I won't say that um, once they heard that it was an all female group that they decided to check it out, but um, clearly they had their own reasons for not joining the group. So there were a couple of men that were asked. Um, I did ask a couple of guys. Um, I I think it worked out. I think the group dynamic worked out fine. Um, the male representation, yes. Um, I think in the conversations that we are having, especially with uh, gender gender violence, I think taking out or leaving out the male voice is is a mistake. Um, there's no way that these issues are going to be resolved without the male voice. So. Um, 
thank you, Clifford, for joining the group. Um, <laughs> um, so in that respect, um, yeah, that's, that's all I have to say in that respect. Fantastic. Thank you so much, uh, Shamila. We are also joined in live by our colleagues from the Arbeit Gallery in London. And I think I would like to ask Deborah, uh, welcome Nimrod and also welcome Rebecca. Hi. Hello. Hi there. Hello. Hi, fantastic. Hello. Hello. So these are the colleagues that will be having an exhibition here in Zimbabwe uh, sometime in October this year. Deborah, what, can, what advice can you give our colleagues in London as they will be visiting Zimbabwe? Uh, in a perspective of a visitor, you know, to Bulawayo. Um, I think, um, yeah, my, my experience, I mean, I can only base it on my experience, was so enriched by actually spending time with the local artists there. I, um, the only thing that I feel that I lost out on was maybe spending more time and going to see more of you know the what Bulaway has to offer. I didn't get to go to some of the national reserves um, and maybe some of the other places because of, we were working so intensely. But uh, my experience was just so great to get to know people, the local people, to understand more about them. And you know, for me, that was the most enriching experience. So I think that's yeah. The gallery is a really good place to start because there is a almost like an e ecosystem if you will and there's lots of people there and it's a bit of a hub so it's a it's a very beautiful place to be able to connect with people local artists and artists from from elsewhere because when we were there there were a few international artists that kind of came through the space as well so there was you know that, that kind of dialogue happening as well yeah thanks ah, fantastic um and um any comments so far anyone wants to make a comment about the project just hit the reaction button and i'll be able to pick you up from here fantastic while that is uh, going on i think looking scrolling down through our messages here i think uh, thank you so much uh, michael roberts uh, from uh, houston for the encouragement. I've always been, um, you know, that guy who loves to participate, Mike. So yes, thank you so much for those lovely comments. Um, I see the chairperson of the Visual Artists Association here uh, in, in Ulawa. George, do you want to come in at this moment and share a little bit about um, and how did you see this project, if at all any? Hello guys, I'm George, uh, hope everyone is okay. Uh, I think by that time I wasn't around, so, uh, I was in South Africa when the project started, but I saw, I saw it online and everything was looking very interesting. Uh, just trying to share about the art scene in Bulawa, I think uh, Clifford uh, is doing a great job there and um, and uh, we're looking forward to grow as an artist community in Bulawayo. We're still there to also try and learn so that we also venture into international trends. Uh, thank you guys for coming in and also show, showing that kind of way of, because we learn, we learn together. The, it's more, most of like, it's more like an art of thinking together, whereby we need to share ideas, then we grow. Um, I think by that way we can grow our artist here in Bulawayo. And uh, unfortunately, I wasn't around and also venture into, and I would love to also partake in such initiatives. And I think it was a wonderful uh, workshop. Yeah. Fantastic. There. Thank you so much, George. As you can see, it's chilled at home. Everyone is at home today in Bulawayo. Uh, because of the incidences that happened this morning, but uh, we certainly hope uh, he's hearing us live and clear. So um, we've got uh, a question coming in there from Kuda. Kuda, do you want to come in with your question or comment? Just unmute your mic, Kuda.
I can see him talking, but his uh, mic is still muted. All right, maybe we'll get around that. It's a new normal, so everybody is trying to get into this uh, uh, new space. So uh, guys, moving forward uh, with the project and obviously planning uh, this for what have been some of the challenges that you faced or that you're currently facing um, with regards to this project, Elizwe. I am aware that it was a bit of a challenge to getting some information regarding the history of uh, say the Queen Lozi K here and the research element. What were some of the challenges that you uh, picked up while you are here and for the local collaborators as well with regards to our own history? I'll start off with Elgin. Ah, uh, yes. What were the challenges? I think the challenges in Bulawayo have a many fold. I think the, the history around um, Queen Laske is so multi-layered and often not written down. So there's very, there's a lot of different voices and a lot of different stories that we heard. And there's also appeared to be a bit of, if I may say so, some sort of um, burying of voices um, that sort of, you know, certain voices, aspects of the story weren't talked about openly, but it was more sort of behind closed doors. So there's maybe a little bit of a sense of censorship, self-censorship. Um, so we had to negotiate that. And obviously we tried to get as much information to make the, the project as rich as possible. Um, um, but yeah, and then obviously just, um, I think all the challenges that we face at the moment is the challenges of, well, especially Bulawayo is facing with the, with the financial crisis, the, the water crisis and the electricity crisis and the general crisis. To get a project going in an environment that is very unstable and you, you never know what new surprise challenge you're going to experience. Um, yeah, but it was, I posed a very interesting kind of field to be open and to work with what was available, which is kind of exciting. Um, and and it, we made it work for us. And um, thanks to also the gallery who helped and support in, in as many ways as they could, wherever they could, to make this project possible. And I think just going forward now, the challenge is that we're obviously back each in our box in our little country in Cape Town and in Joburg to keep the momentum going across countries to finishing up the edit and um, keeping the collaboration going. I think this is a nice way to reconnect with our team and to share the momentum to keep on going forward and to finalize. And yeah, thanks. Absolutely. Um, I think you are raising issues that have been, obviously it's not a secret, Zimbabwe has been going through some economic challenges. Maybe let me bring in the regional director now to share a little bit about how uh, perhaps is the National Gallery navigating through some of these challenges around uh, archiving vis-a-vis uh, -vis visiting artists into the country so that we can also get to hear and most of the participants get to here, how as a gallery we will be navigating through the Abuto. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Clifford. Uh, greetings, everyone. Well, I think what Clifford is asking me is just to share with you the internal thinking process in terms of how we are going to navigate uh, COVID 19 in the immediate and in the future. For instance, one of the things that we've uh, deliberately set up on to do internally last year was to digitize our exhibition. I mentioned earlier on that in this Zoom conversation with colleagues from Upper Gallery in London, we were meant to introduce our first, you know, exclusive full-scale digital art exhibition in May, but of course that has had to be made for obvious reasons. But this is just a signal to the individuals and the colleagues here that going forward, we see ourselves doing more digital interventions than this. 
you know, prompts me to ask the question to you, the partners, to say, do you see yourselves doing a digital uh, representation of the work that you've done? I know you are waiting for the galleries to open so that you show the digital work. Are you probably contemplating alternative digital expression as well? Is the question. But on the residency side, since we can't receive any artists for now, what we want to experiment with is the, you know, an online residency kind of arrangement, which is anchored on mentorship, where the artists are benefiting from using our space, get to be connected with us regionally and internationally, uh, so that that key uh, mentorship you know, uh, and collaboration. So that is the internal thing. Uh, in short, I will remind you of the question that I asked about digitizing Elizu. Fantastic. Um, Shamila, are you of the idea of digitalizing Elizu uh, as a way of moving forward in this new normal? Or you still feel strongly about the physicality of the project in terms of exhibition and putting it out there. Ah, we just missed Shamila there, that's fine. Zandi, do you want to take that up before I hand over to other guys? Just unmute first. Yeah. Unmuted. Ask me the question again. Uh, Buto was raising an issue around um, digitalizing, possibility of digitalizing the, 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 the project as a way of moving forward. I, I was just checking, how do you feel about that? Um, I think the new normal is going digital for everybody. Um, it's about us cataloging the work digitally. Um, it's the only way to go, really, because it doesn't look like COVID is leaving anytime soon. And I think the challenge that a lot of people are facing is that they're, um, what's the word? They are resisting. <laughs> and yeah, I think um, to turn the exhibition, um, the exhibition digital, it just becomes a question about what, um, in what way do we digitalize not in the video and a sound um, in a way that they will give them the necessary um, experience um, that will give people, the viewer, um, the experience of the work because the scale of some of the work that we created, I don't think um, will be received in, in the way that it was made. I don't know if this makes sense because some of those artworks are quite large. And if you can imagine seeing, you know, something that is two meters large on, your, on, on, on my phone, you're not going to be the same experience. And I think that's the challenge um, of how do we digitalize our work in such a way that the experience is what we intend. I hope that makes sense. It does, in a certain angle, Brad, from the South African um, experience, Deborah. Is there a possibility? Are you, what are your feelings around that? Uh, to be honest, Cliff, I have mixed feelings. Um, I really feel that the work is, will be better seen uh, in experiencing it, as Andy said. Even having a, on a big projector in a room, it's a very different experience to watching something on your phone or watching something on a small screen. Um, and, and the emotional experience of standing in front of a large work or in an installation is a completely different experience than looking at a picture of it. So I would probably put myself on a more resistant side of wanting to digitize the whole exhibition and still try and kind of push for a physical um, iteration of the work, not to say that some of it you know, couldn't live in the digital space. I think there is definitely room for that. 
we do have the portrait images we made which are beautiful and and would be beautiful online we have a video which is a digital format so it's quite easy for us to put it online but again we what we will lose is the uh, experience but um, just from other works that we've made uh, and put online there's definitely i would say the physical exhibition of the work is a very important aspect um, it, it doesn't have the same resonance you know just as an online video because it's also an artwork and video art and a documentary art or just a, you know people are used to watching video in a particular way um, but people are not used to watching video art so that's my opinion absolutely fantastic um maybe let's get back to the land um what are the some of the major uh, take outs with regards to the title and the project? I know a lot of people are still interested in linking the two together in as much as there were other aspects or other elements that happened during that week of the, um, of the residency and the making and the creation of Iliswe. To other participants, what, what are your feelings around the land issue? I know in Zimbabwe, it's very controversial in South Africa. There are a lot of voices around the land ownership. Anyone wants to come in on that one? Before maybe we can ask our colleagues uh, from London to share a little bit about digital art from, the, uh, from, the, from their experience. Well, I'll come back on that if you don't mind. Yes. Um, the land issue, like I explained before, that the man had cold feet, and mm. the whole thing will not be complete until everybody else is involved. Like mm. I also will say, the men feel they own the land, the men feel they can say anything, and yet, of course, it's the women who own the land, who work the land, who actually the land is female. Absolutely fantastic, because linking to that traditional cultural aspect of uh, the land, the female, I think that is probably the reason why we felt, or the project felt, strong characters like Queen Rosie Kay was able to uh, be strong in that area and then without necessarily wanting to preempt the exhibition details itself. But those are some of the characters that emanated from that uh, uh, discussion. Uh, anyone wants to share with uh, this conversation elements or aspect of the, the new digital craze, you know, the new digital art medium? I know it was mentioned here, some artists are still Zandira mentioned and said maybe they are afraid of jumping into this digital wagon. And some artworks are created specifically with showing physically uh, in mind. Um, Rebecca, do you want to come in there on Nimrod from London in terms of digital art from the West and how you guys have been approaching it? Maybe to help with the guys here in, in Zim. Hello. Hey Clifford, hey everyone, it's Nimrod here. Can you hear me well, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, I, th I think um, kind of pre-COVID we were um, doing what we've done for quite a few years now, um, really challenging the medium of what it means to, to, to work uh, with digital technologies, the intersection of art and digital technologies and it's been um, very interesting for us but since March and during this last period we understand how important it is not just for us organization to deal with digital art specifically but in general for museums and institutions out there to be to have the skills to implement what they do uh, online in a digital way and, and I think what we've seen is that a lot have attempted and not too many succeeded in doing so um, and it felt that maybe digital med med the medium as an art form was less kind of part of, of the commercial art world let's say I think the, 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 the last couple of months really shown the strength and the possibilities 
uh, when we started the conversation with the with you guys um, about having a show, we were very excited about the possibilities of exploring from one hand on ours, working with institutions that are not necessarily digital and, and how we can think together, of course, with, with the idea of, of working uh, in Zimbabwe, but also with new audiences and specifically with an institution that doesn't have that as part of their track record, as part of their exhibition. Uh, and mm -hmm. I, I think I think it was very exciting for us to think together how we can work with your space, but with our understanding of virtual space. Fantastic. Um, and it work and it and when the show will be on, hopefully in October, the the audience can come and see how we I think manipulate the space to allow it to kind of expand into a virtual and digital realms. And it's very exciting, I think, for both of our organizations to be able to have this partnership and collaboration of of allowing to show something that hasn't been kind of done in your gallery before. Yeah, so very excited about that. Okay, and Rebecca, do you want to come in there quickly? Yeah, I just want to kind of say a little bit about um, collaborative processes online. Mm -hmm. um, I think what I gather from from the the sort of the residency that we're discussing, it was it was very much about being physically together and kind of working through things together and making things together in real space and when when we kind of think about an online space it's a completely different set of rules almost um, and I think right. it does require a lot of like um, a lot of knowledge from before about how to kind of use web-based platforms or how to code or you know these kinds of things that are maybe tied to a different kind of art market art realm so I think I think I kind of I feel for you in terms of like trying to get this work online in a, in a digital kind of way, um, especially because it was never made with that intention. Exactly. Thank you to our colleagues in London. We just wanted to bring mm -hmm. that element. And then Jolene, you were tasked uh, with um, document process. You were running around with the cameras and getting people into positions and really documenting the whole process and the amount of work that you had to go through editing and doing all these other um, uh, aspects of the exhibition behind the scenes. What's your feeling about all this now? Um, well, well, Cliff, I, I would say that I wasn't really documenting behind the scenes. We were more making like a film, the film artwork that went with the the rest of the the art um because if i was documenting behind the scenes we'd have a lot more um <laughs> behind the scenes process to to talk about like the in, we would, i would have done more interviewing of people and but um yeah it, it was really interesting from a filmmaking perspective to like take try as much as possible take myself out but right. still contributes my my style and vision, um, but keeping everyone else's vision and everyone else's <clears throat> contribution um, at some point of <laughs> some kind of equal, like so there's equal contribution coming in, collaborative, because I was particular skills. Um, so partly being a tool and partly also bringing my myself in. Um, Fantastic. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's quite a, quite cool to work that way. But trying to be mindful of where other people, um, yeah, mindful of other people's uh, input and vision and making sure there's there's equal equal play. I think in the editing process, what's also interesting is um, how to have a collaborative vision and and does the work speak for everybody involved um yeah so that's that's been quite interesting because there are obviously some things that i don't understand and then other people understand in a different way and so it's a lot of discussion and and play but i think we all grow from that so yeah it's been that's been quite cool Hmm. Okay, uh, I think we will now give some final remarks as we close down this uh, conversation. I'll just go around and start with you, Zandile, your final remarks uh, on this uh, subject.
Zandile. All right, while she's working with her, I've done it. I've done it. Sorry, I okay, forgot fantastic. to unmute. <laughs> That's great. Okay, I was saying um, there's not just one subject, one issue, or one element of the collaboration. Um, but going forward, I think my final remarks, I just want to say thank you again to everybody, to you, Mr. Zulu Deb, to you, to you, Algin, to Shamila, to everybody that um, was involved in the production of the work. Um, and thank you very much to Joe. And I hope that the message will come across um, with the being, I hope that the work itself will also give um, room for people to grow mentally and also expand. And get, I don't know, some kind of resolution um, with regards to the um, identity thing that I think we need um, in terms of all these issues that we address is to heal as people. And we need to just to heal so we can move on more empowered and move on more identically aware. <laughs> if that's the way to, I, I don't know, yeah. Like with a, a stronger sense of identity, I think that's what I'm trying to say. Um, and I really hope that the 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 image of Wulawayo and the image of the artist opens up a new landscape. I hope this makes sense. But those are my final remarks. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Zandile. Stay cool and stay safe. Yeah. And then to Elgin, your final closing remarks. Uh, yeah, Zandi, thank you for your words. And uh, Clifford, thank you for hosting us on the gallery. Thank you for arranging this. And yeah, it was for me a very transformative experience. Um, I've learned a lot more to be more gentle. Art action and approaches and with myself um, meeting all these really talented artists female artists who came with so much loving energy um, was really special for me um, going forward I think it's exciting um, that we have been given a little bit more time to prepare that uh, we can figure out new ways of showing the work considering COVID and but also considering still traveling the work internationally. I personally also feel that the um, physical experience cannot be replaced and I mean being we all being pushed so much more into our homes and into sort of the digital experience it's quite a transformation for everybody at the moment but I, I personally would not want to lose the physical experience and the actual experience at the gallery and doing the residence was quite amazing. Though I do believe that sort of having a project in virtual space can be equally productive, amazing and expanding. So yeah, I'd like to see those two things grow together and not to swing completely into sort of a virtual space and not to swing completely into a physical space, finding some balance for me is important and um, yeah so I look forward to to showing these the work in various different ways thanks thanks everybody thank you Mr Zulu we certainly look forward to welcome you back to Valoyo very soon uh, Joe uh, do you want to share your closing remarks Jolene Um, I also want to express my gratitude to you, Clifford, for welcoming us, bringing us in, and all the support that you've given as the gallery and in your personal capacity as an artist, and Deborah for being the main instigator of the collaboration and always keeping the vision of collaboration so clear, because you, you need sometimes you need someone to remind you that you're collaborating and working together 
and um, and laying out guidelines for that and really like helping us along that process and then also bringing her amazing artistic talents and then all the other artists Sandy and Shamila and Vuyo who's not here and Lady Chow is not here and Elgin like yeah as Elgin said that loving energy everyone came with such um, pure intentions and it felt like a very healing process um, and a lot of the work feels like a very simple laying out of you know what was happening at the time and what was happening inside of us and the transformation and what happened in the past and like and just like letting it come to surface and to light you know it's not it's not trying to make anyone do anything or feel anything it's just trying to like expose and just a little bit more of you know what what can happen when we come together which was powerful um yeah, I mean, we did in a week what some people do in, in years, which is, I mean, that's, that's quite something. Okay. And yeah, it was exciting. And I, I hope I get to come back to Zimbabwe. And I, you know, I hope everyone stays well and safe and as fed as possible in these times. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, thank you so much, Joelyn. We certainly look forward to your morning energy and that beautiful music that you used to play in the morning. Um, Shamila, do you want to say your closing remarks? Oh, okay. Um, well, I'd like to just say um, thank you to everyone for everything, for every, everything that everybody did. Um, we all contributed so much um, in such a small well, a small space of time. Um, if you call it a, a short space of time, rather. Um, it's, it was very intense. Um, and we did that work in September last year. But I think it's even more relevant now when we look at the protests, the Black Lives Matter, when we look at GBV in South Africa, and we look at all of these issues relating to identity and ownership and the construction of monuments and artwork in monuments. So when it comes out, when we eventually see the work, um, it will be the perfect time. And um, thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Shamila. Cool. Debs, do you want to also give your closing remarks as well, Deborah? Yeah, thank you, Cliff. Um, yeah, just what everyone else has kind of said already. And I just want to say a, a really a special thank you to the gallery and to you, Cliff, because without your support and your belief in this project and this way of working and giving us the opportunity to explore in the way that we, we do it. And I really hope that in the afterlife of the work, you know, there's two lives. There's the making and the process of making, which was so incredible. And just everyone gave their 110% to the making process that in the second and the afterlife of the work, that it also um, brings opportunities and open doors and it brings about the needed discussions. And the work itself has, um, is as powerful in its afterlife as it was in its making. Thanks. Fantastic. Thanks, Deb. It was good having you in Valawayo and so much energy coming from you there. And I would ask you to ask Buto to give uh, his final remarks with regards to this uh, conversation and moving forward. Buto? Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Clifford. Uh, this is to thank our collaborators uh, who have made possible the ELIS uh, partnership. And I think from the position of the gallery, I get the sense that this was an intimate working experience, good rapport, good energy. I personally look forward to seeing uh, the physical manifestation of the exhibition and if possible also its digital equivalent. But uh, we delight at such, you know, people to people exchanges and we look forward to doing more uh, going forward. Thank you very much to everyone, particularly the audience as well. 
Thank you indeed to all the participants that uh, joined in uh, into this conversation all over the world. And until next Tuesday, let's meet again. But tomorrow, tune in to the Zoom from the National Gallery of Zimbabwe in Harare. There will be a, a Harare conversations there. So let's also do that and tune in. Thank you so much, National Gallery of Harare, for tuning in as well. Until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Shop shop. <laughs>